I am Maya Plarkataya, an assistant professor at both the New York University Roy Myers College of Nursing and Grossman School of Medicine. The fellowship provides both professional and leadership development with a substantial amount of funding for research. And unlike the majority of funding opportunities that we have, this gives us an opportunity to develop both ourselves and that research project in tandem. And I feel like even though it's only been a short time that I've grown and the work that I want to want to do is far more clear. Share with me your initial impression of your cohort and the program. It is probably the most inclusive, supportive group of individuals I've worked with in a really long time. Um, the program is well organized and I just feel that it's the first time in a long time that I've had the opportunity. The cohort is so diverse. We all have a, a variety of interests. Um, there's a lot of work that wants to be that we're trying to do in the area of justice that I think is amazing. Um, but I think a lot of us have felt for a very long time that we didn't have a place and that, you know, we've been told for so long that you need to get funding, you need to do these things, but the resources weren't there. And so to have someone put it at your feet and tell you the sky's the limit is just, there are no words. What unique lens do you believe you bring to the nursing profession? I come from uh, a very Southern family, <laughs> very Southern background. On my dad's side of the family, everyone has hypertension. Everybody has diabetes. All the men on my dad's side of the family had heart attacks before they were in their 50s. My mom's side of the family has the same sort of chronic conditions history as well. Um, but I also grew up in Germany as an army brat. And those disparities also existed between those who were officers versus those who were enlisted. And so I've always had this desire to improve outcomes for those who have less or are seen as having less. Um, and so I think I sort of bring that to everything that I do. What are your hopes for how this fellowship advances your leadership skills and your contribution to the nursing profession? From my military experience, I've had quite a bit of leadership training, but in a very different way. And I find that the skill set that I require is hopefully going to broaden my horizons in terms of access to individuals and access to organizations. One of the things that I'm really interested in is trying to figure out where uh, clinical guidelines are made, who has the impact there, and how to become one of those people. Um, you know, how to become a, an advisor to those who are making decisions about our patient population. And I think the only way for me to do that is to put myself at those tables, which isn't something I'm comfortable doing. I tend to be just fine taking care of my patients at the bedside, but recognize that's, en that's not enough. And so I'm hoping that it allows me to grow as an individual, but also gives me a skill set to stand in front of these rooms and give a pitch. Describe for me your project. What big challenge are you tackling over the next three years? My project really focuses on the lack of access that minority populations have specifically in this um, project with, with end-stage kidney disease. And so one of the major outcomes is cardiovascular death. So it may be sudden cardiovascular death. It may be that a patient has a heart attack. Um, and it's really common in the end-stage kidney disease population. And the reason is part has been uh, related to fluid consumption. One of the things we tell patients to do is to restrict their salt intake. Well, if I tell you to restrict your salt intake and you're on a fixed income and you're federally supported and you're on dialysis three days a week for three to four hours a day, the likelihood that you can do that is fairly slim. So there's a, a organization here in, in Philadelphia called the Metropolitan Area uh, Neighborhood Nutrition Alliance that's going to deliver meals to this patient population. And then we're going to follow them to see if they have better cardiovascular outcomes as a result of having access to healthful foods. So taking the, the discrimination piece, the racism piece out of uh, the equation. And then also seeing if maybe that doesn't work. What if structural racism and discrimination really is so impactful that even though I'm giving you these meals and you still live in a zip code that is unhealthy otherwise, meaning you can't go for walks, you feel unsafe, that you're constantly stressed, if that exists, maybe this diet doesn't matter and we need to be thinking about how to help these individuals in a different way. I am so thankful for the opportunity and I, I really want to make sure that I get everything out of it that's humanly possible.